It's spherical! Reggie Drago. Reggie Drake. How about Reggie yeah. Mistake? But really though, what? Dragon Orb Pokemon? Get that out of here. Even in universe, it's a mistake. All the lesser Regis are made by Reggie Gigas, and this one is made of crystallized dragon energy, but Reggie Gigas ran out of it after it only finished the head. Alright, that's a pretty cute story, actually. But hey, what's Reggie Drago all about? What's going on with all that? And how wrong will this pre-release speculative video be once the Crown Tundra DLC comes out? Let's find out. Hey, look at this sweet design! It's our most popular! And now it comes in glow in the dark! Look at it! At night. And like all our shirts, they are super soft and super lovely. Get them while they last at noggin.net. So what even is Reggie Drago? I mean, yes, yes, memes aside, it's Reggie and his body is ready, but is it? It almost looks like it's just a head of a dragon, of course, but still, no body at all to be ready. But let's go ahead and just talk about what this thing looks like. First off, it's a dragon's head, but more importantly, it's an orb with two pieces of a dragon's head, and if you put those pieces together where the teeth lines match up, then you almost get a full head, but with an orb in the mouth, like a ball gag. Harder, Reggie! Being named Reggie Drago is in tune with the other Reggies. Essentially, Reggie is Latin for royal, so in this case the name's Royal Dragon, or possibly Kingly Dragon. And again, it has an age motif, like the other Reggies. Stone Age, Ice Age, Iron Age, and now we have the Age of Electricity and the Dark Ages. Really, the Dark Age is just another normally negative term used to describe the Middle Ages. It was the period of time between the fall of the Roman Empire and the beginning of the Italian Renaissance the Age of Discovery and all that. The term Dark Ages was coined by an Italian scholar named Francesco Petrarch, who lived from 1304 to 1374. He used this label to describe what he perceived as a lack of quality in the Latin literature of his day. Others came along and expanded this designation to include not only literature, but also just culture in general. It was a very dark time. The term thus evolved as a designation for the supposed lack of culture, and lack of advancement. There was no enlightenment happening, thus it was a dark age. Europe during this medieval period, yeah, if you look at the history and everything, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, dark. I mean, the Black Plague didn't help. Black typically also means dark, so dark ages, the ages caused by the Black Plague, uh, however, it is important that we understand that the Dark Ages is merely a spooky term for the Medieval Age. You know, the one with knights and horses, neither of which exist anymore. So there's a fun fact for you. Trust me, this will all make sense eventually. Let me keep explaining things. The Dark Age was a time of general human wickedness. I mean, this was the birth of the extreme torture industry. Wars galore, crusades even population wiping plagues, and any amount of scientific advancement was considered blasphemy by many. So not much happened besides all of the people that were being burned on the pyre because they floated like a duck. I hear that some people even wanted to build bridges out of suspected witches because then the bridge would never collapse. Either way though, there was a lot of magic and myths forming in Europe during these times. One of the more notable figures was Merlin, King Arthur's court mage, and no matter what I say about him, just know that I'm right, because things change over the years. Just because he wasn't a wizard in the original tale doesn't mean that he hasn't become some mystical mage in our stories today. I mean, just thinking about him makes me think of a pointy hat, star-robed, crystal-using boss dude. Do we still say boss? Is that, is that cool? Can it be cool again? When you think of Merlin, you think of Old Mage with arcane powers. And if you haven't seen my Dragon Types Explained video, then go check that out because we all agree I'm right here. Dragons are basically magic. The dragon energy or the dragon type then comes from some arcane power, similar to a sorcerer's dragon's magic. It's then crystallized into a physical form as many magically charged soul gems and orbs often are. It's just raw sorcery infused into the earth itself. When using a dragon type Pokemon move, the user is tapping into this energy of sorts to produce the effects of the moves. It's how you differentiate a dragon type fiery breath 
from a fire type fiery breath. It's how you differentiate a dragon claw from a normal claw attack. One is charged with this arcane power, the other is not. You can see it in the colors of the animations of the moves. In many fantasy worlds, this energy is called mana sometimes mana, or sometimes the a other or something, and depending on who you ask, you could get a very different answer. Me personally, I really like the word mana, or mana, but as to why it's called mana, well... Mana is the spiritual life force energy or healing power that permeates the universe in the culture of the Melanesians and Polynesians, though that is of course an extreme oversimplification, as sometimes any one of the tens of thousands of islands would have their own tweaked understanding and definition of the word. But in general, mana is just life energy. The etymology of mana is interesting, as many cultures have an idea of what it is. In some proto-oceanic languages, mana is thought to have referred to powerful forces of nature, such as thunder and storm winds. Which sounds extremely dragony to me, especially considering that Pokemon is Japanese and Asian dragons tended to be much more associated with wind and the ocean rather than fire, like with European dragons. I mean, just look at Dragonite. Now as for how we see mana today in the gaming world as a means of quantifying magic, that's mainly thanks to Dungeons and Dragons, but the inspiration then for Dungeons and Dragons and other such role-playing games were from the Melanesians' folklore explained in the book The Melanesians' Studies in Their Anthropology and Folklore, written by Robert Henry Cordington, which discussed topics such as mana and magical energies being quantified, which was a new idea to Europeans who basically all viewed magic as... It's magic. But this new quantifiable magic idea was later popularized by Larry Niven in his short story Not Long Before the End. And of course, by this point, there was electricity, a means of doing seemingly magical things with energy. So, quantifying magic was a really popular idea. It's also similar to how we view ki and chakras and other sorts of metaphysical powers and energies. They are all different forms of magic to us these days. And in games, we started using mana as a quantifiable level of magic. In Pokemon, this is essentially what PP is, PowerPoints, it's essentially a renamed mana system common to other RPGs. And in Pokemon, this magic is called infinity energy. Each type is its own specified sort of infinity energy, and the Theoretically, dragon energy is infinity energy in its most raw form. It is raw elemental power. And then Reggie Drago is made of pure crystalline dragon energy. And we know this because the official Pokemon website says so, and it also explains that the energy is densest in the center of its core. Oh, and also its core is pretty similar to a crystal ball, now that I think about it. And Merlin and magic and dragons all love crystal balls and wizard's orbs, things normally used to magically see a hero wherever they are, and they've also been known to be used as the catalyst in magic and spells. But again, back to Regidrago, folklore tells us that the legendary Pokemon Regigigas tried to create a Pokemon from crystallized dragon energy, but ran out of crystals and was only able to complete the head. People of old feared that if Regidrago were to be completed, it would merely rain destruction on their land, so they sealed it away with in a temple. This actually really helps our Dark Ages idea. People were legitimately terrified of magic, mainly because of the church and all, but in the Pokemon world, they have much, much more of a right to fear magic, especially before they had Pokeballs. Fun fact reminder, before they were called Pokemon in the Pokemon universe, they were known as magical creatures. And dragon moves were especially devastating, again, because of twisters. And I mean, like, Draco Meteor. Yeah, it just summons meteors. That's really bad for all the small villages. So if I cut wind that there was a being being built made of pure dragon energy, I'd for sure want to seal that away. Don't want to wake up one morning to your house and farm missing all around you. Now, Regigigas made all these Regigolems, but he didn't have enough dragon energy to finish this one. Why? Well, have you ever had to build a big gunpla for the first time and it's like, and step three, finish the rest of the owl. Maybe Regigigas just didn't know how. Or, let's be real for a second, it's probably really hard to crystallize dragon energy. I mean, the others, he's got rocks laying around, there's metals all throughout the ground, ice, it's easy enough too. But crystallizing anything is hard enough as it is, but now try crystallizing a magical part of the fabric of the universe. Yeah, I'm surprised Regigigas even got the head done. And boy, am I glad he started with the head, because could you imagine? But. 
Crystallized dragon energy must be based off of something, right? And if dragon energy is essentially just mana, then it must be crystallized mana. Which is another common JRPG thing, but why is that a thing? How do you crystallize a magical force? Heck, why do people think crystals in real life are actually just magic? Let's start with that. So a crystal, as we all know, are normally minerals that are deposited slowly over time in a very specific molecular structure known as a crystalline structure. These are very regularly uniform and straight, forming almost perfect boxes or columns and rows of atoms. One of the major reasons that they are so easily penetrated by light or are translucent is because more of the light bits can actually bounce through the structure. It's not getting scattered and absorbed by really irregular shapes and such, like most rocks and really most matter. However, though, this structure and uniformity is seen as special. And like, it is, don't get me wrong, it's cool rock stuff, but some view crystals as a form of a catalyst that is able to pull out the impurities and negative energies and toxins from your body because they are like a vacuum. Why a rock that lets light through it is a vacuum, I don't get though. If it has space for light, it has space for bad spirits and measles and autism. Yeah, okay, all right, ma'am. Uh, these crystals are also seen as focal points for your good energy to improve your positive mood powers and such, which is why many people wear them as jewelry. It's to channel their energies, help them have a positive view on life and that that, that I can at least respect. In other fantasies, crystallized mana is the outcome of large reservoirs of mana pooling somewhere in the world, be it a place of worship to gods or possibly a source of true life and perfect nature, so saturated with life and nature energy that it starts to actually solidify. Normally what you think of when you crystallize things is turning some sort of liquid into a solid, like ice crystals coming from water, and normal crystals do that too. Minerals are found in groundwater and they're being slowly deposited on top of each other. In Fantasy's case, it's just that. It's magic juice instead of rock water, though. But in a pure gaming mana sense, it is a source of quick power to replenish your reserves, allowing the player to continue playing the game with strong spells. You know, it's just gameplay mechanics. Gameplay mechanics, always the bane of lore channels they are. But I'm going to say, mana crystals are almost symbolic of the flow of energy. If you know how crystals are made, then it makes sense that the saturation of mana in an area would have some sort of solidification of that mana, and a crystalline structure makes the most sense, as they look magical to the common man. And also, the whole process of crystals being made is fairly rare, and so, to the common man, it looks almost otherworldly. It's special compared to regular rocks and other structures found in nature. Interestingly, crystallized dragon energy isn't even that crazy of an idea. I mean, this isn't even the first game to do it. Spyro was all about dragons being turned into crystals, their pure energy forms. And so is that more recent Ark expansion. And I'm sure there's loads of obscure games and books and movies that all touch upon that too. All because crystallized dragon energy isn't that crazy of an idea. Dragons are often viewed as the raw essence of the powers that are arcane. Dragons are literally beings of magic. And in Pokemon, the dragon type seems to function similarly. Again, that video. If you haven't seen it and you don't click it by the end of this, so help me, I will continue my life as normal. So if any Pokemon type is going to have its infinity energy crystallized, it's going to be dragon because it's the most raw, essentially the heaviest of the energies. Meaning in huge quantities, it's easily stuck together to form crystals. At least a lot easier than the other types. And then Regigigas took the crystals to form this creature. But beyond being complicated, why give up? Well, it could be that Regigigas didn't necessarily give up, rather it just ran out of crystals to use. By the time Regigigas found more, it was too late, and Regidrago woke up. But why did Regigigas start? Is it just as a means of symbolizing the Age of Dragons, the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages? Perhaps, but that and the Age of Electricity aren't exactly close enough to each other to justify them sharing the same ruins. And also, the other Regis are all super ancient humans! time periods, you know? Why the huge gap? Those 
are probably questions that will be answered in the Crown Tundra DLC or the anime. But here is a theory that I think holds some pretty interesting ground. So, there's already been a theory for a while that the original dragon was originally in Galar, or at least the twin princes were descended from it, similar to how the British Empire eventually led to the United States. It's basically America's dad. So, perhaps after the original dragon left Galar, or after it split, it left behind a bunch of crystallized dragon energy in whatever sort of energy explosion the splitting caused, like splitting a magical atom. This, of course, led to Reshiram, Zekrom, and Qurem. And maybe to restore order, Regigigas tried making the original dragon again, putting all of these shards of crystallized dragon energy from the original dragon back together. But because most of the energy went into making the Tau Trio, there was simply nowhere near enough crystallized dragon energy to complete a dragon. And so, Regigigas was stuck making just the head. And now, there's just a dragon golem. Here you go, says Regigigas, and the people were scared of it. So they locked it away. Eh? Eh? Maybe. It's a theory, at least. It'd be some super cool world building if it were true lore. Uh, but considering it's super cool and references other regions and other legendaries and fits right into the world they're building super nicely, it's probably not correct at all. I would honestly be surprised if any of that gets referenced, but who knows? Maybe what Game Freak came up with is even more interesting. I mean, that idea that I just explained doesn't really explain Reggie Electricity or whatever its name is, so maybe there's something even cooler going on. Oh, well maybe it's just there because electricity is plasma and the original dragon breathed plasma, which fire and electricity both are, hence Zekrom on Reshiram. So it's like the physical and the non-physical parts of the leftover original dragon scraps were made into these two Reggies. Perhaps. I'd love that idea. But what do you think? Let me know down below, and you go to noggin.net, but also check out that video. It's right here. Here's the link. It's very important. Never stop using your noggin.